we're looking here at an anterior view of the right hand to look at some muscles. And here, firstly, let's just remove the palmar aponeurosis. And be careful not to take everything else with it. And so here on the lateral side of the hand, firstly, we find the abductor pollicis brevis. So that's the abductor on the lateral aspect of the thenar eminence. So the thenar eminence, this mound here, that's largely made up by these muscles. So then medial to that, we have the flexor pollicis brevis. And deep to those, we have the opponent's pollicis. So the opponent's pollicis, the deep one there. Now you usually can't see that one uh, unless the um, flexor or the abductor have been removed. But if they have, then it's quite clear. So um, that's the opponent's there. Then we can see, as we move medially, we can see the adductor pollicis. Now the adductor pollicis is quite large and you can see it here coming out to the thumb. It's not considered to be one of the thenar muscles but it is attached to the thumb. Now then on the medial side then we have three hypothenar muscles. So again we have an abductor on the outside and a flexor towards the middle of the hand there. Now on this model, they're showing that there's a dividing line here between the two muscles. Now sometimes on the specimens that will be hard to spot and sometimes it's easy. Sorry, I kept slipping off it there too. It's just medial to the nerve that's there, nerve branch that's there. So we've got abductor out here and then flexor in here. Now again, there's an opponent's muscle that's deep to them. So the opponent's digitide minimi deep to both those muscles but usually on this model and then usually on specimens, you can see the opponent's digitime minimi without removing the flexor or the abductor digitime minimi. And one thing I forgot to mention, so again we can see the opponents here on the medial side. One thing I forgot to mention though is the flexor here is actually called flexor digitime minimi brevis. Now there isn't a flexor digitime minimi longus, but there are two long flexor digitorum muscles. So it gets given the name flexor digitime minimi brevis, even though there isn't actually a flexor digitime minimi longus. So here we've got the opponent's digitime minimi, which can be seen very clearly if you remove the abductor and the flexor. Now then, if we move towards the middle of the hand on the palmar surface here, we can see these muscles here, which are, there's four of them, and they're associated with the long flexor tendons. And these are the lumbricals. Now the first one is usually the biggest and the easiest one to find. So there's the first lumbrical and you can see that it's attaching on the lateral side of digit 2. So the first lumbrical goes to digit 2, the second to digit 3 and so on. You can see the uh, distal attachment here is joining the extensor expansion. So it's joining into this tendon that runs right along the posterior aspect of the digit and that means that these muscles are in a position to flex here at the metacarpophalangeal joint but extend at the interphalangeal joints here where they attach um, before they attach to the distal phalanx. So that's the lumbricals. And they're very easy to spot on this model. Sometimes on specimens they can be quite small. Now, deep to those, uh, deep to the lumbricals and the long flexor tendons, we then find the palmar interosseous muscles. Now, there are three of them. Now, there's one that's clearly visible here between metacarpals three and four. So we can see that one quite clearly. There would be one in here between metacarpals two and three, and there's another one out here between metacarpals three and four. Um, now, these ones are adductors. So the one that's in here between metacarpals 2 and 3 is going to attach here on the medial side of digit 2 and it's going to adduct that index finger, so bring it in towards the middle finger. And likewise then this one here, the second 
primary enterocytes is going to adduct digit 4, and the third one is going to adduct digit 5. Uh, then we have, if we look at a dorsal point of view, we can then see the dorsal interosseous muscles 1, 2, 3 and 4, again between the metacarpals. And if you look at the fibre direction here on the base on the uh, first uh, dorsal interosseous muscle, you can see that that's going to abduct the index finger. So this one is going to pull the index finger away from the middle finger. And then the two that are either side, so second and third, that are either side of the middle finger, they're going to pull the middle finger either way. So they're going to Either, and in either case, that's called abduction because the middle finger is considered to be the midline of the hand. So if you move it either laterally or medially, that's considered to be abduction. And then the fourth dorsal interosseous is going to abduct the fourth digit. So there's four muscles here, but they abduct only digits two, three, and four because you need two of them to abduct digit three because you can abduct it either way.